Hey party people! Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Everything that I talk about throughout this entire YouTube video, supplies, types of yarn, types of hooks, types of things you can do, uh, accessories, add-ons, whatever, things that I use, things that I trust, will be linked in the description box below. So if you're like, hey, you mentioned this crochet kit you bought and you loved, where can I find it? Well, I linked it down there in the description box for you so you can find it and you can get all of the crochet supplies that you need, okay? I've been messing with the lighting for this video for roughly 20 minutes, so I'm giving up. Uh, this is the lighting that you're gonna get. Yay, yay for awesome lighting. My setup is a little different today. Oh, I keep bumping the mic. My setup is a little different today. I am using my PC arm thing for my mic and I'm sitting at my PC to film this, which I'm come to find out is not the best place lighting wise because I'm in like this weird dark corner in my room and all the lights behind me. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get into the video. Today's video is going to be awesome, especially if you are a beginner crocheter or you wanna start crocheting and you just have a lot of questions. You don't really know much about yarn or yarn weight or hooks or what kind of hook or what kind of yarn and all of that. I'm gonna be going through every detail, okay? So you have all the information so you know exactly what you need to buy for whatever you're wanting to make, okay? So let's go ahead and get right into it. First, the different types of yarn and what they're for. So the first question you need to ask yourself is, what do you want to make? Because that really determines what kind of yarn you're gonna get. So are you making a blanket? a bag, a piece of clothing, something you're gonna wear. What is the clothing? Is it a sweater or is it like a top? Okay, so you kind of need to figure out what you're gonna do. Okay, and once you know the general idea, if you're gonna make a blanket, you're gonna want blanket yarn, thicker yarn, okay? Thicker yarn will get you farther faster. So if you don't wanna spend a year making this blanket, you're gonna wanna go for thicker yarn, okay? Um, if you're gonna make a bag, I suggest either 100% acrylic yarn, because that's what I use. Um, it's very budget friendly and it's easier to work with. If you have the money, you can also do 100% cotton. Bags with 100% cotton are cool because you can toss them in the washer and not really have to worry about, you know, getting stuff on them. I like to do 100% cotton with market bags if you're going to have fruit in them, you know, just in case the fruit kind of gets messy. It's easy to wash those bags. If you're going to do clothing, this was one of my biggest questions in the comment section. What do I use to make clothing so I don't get overheated? I suggest um, bamboo yarn. There's a specific brand that I like and I'll put it on the screen, but any kind of lightweight bamboo yarn or cotton yarn, okay? And when I say lightweight, we're gonna get into yarn weight. So now you have like a general idea. You really need to pick your yarn based off what you're making. Like that's the base question. Now you know what you're making. You kind of understand what type of yarn you should get into, but you're confused about weight. What the hell does weight yarn mean? Like what, weight of what? What does that have to do with anything, okay? Now, pro tip, the thinner the yarn, the harder it is to learn how to crochet. So if you're brand new to crocheting, do not get, we're about to get into the weight yarn category. I'm about to go over all the different weights. If you are a beginner, never picked up hook, never picked up yarn, do not go get anything under, I would say anything less than like weight four yarn because it is gonna be so much harder. And yes, there are exceptions to this rule. I'm sure someone's gonna get in the comments and say, well, I learned on a, a super fine, super thin yarn and now I'm a mate. Like, okay, sure. But if you are a person who needs to be good at something immediately or you're gonna give up, then don't get anything less than a weight four yarn, okay? Just remember that going into this next section. So weight, weight and yarn. What does it have to do with anything? <laughs> First of all, I'm gonna show you how to find the weight of the yarn. So if you are buying a skein of yarn or a bundle or whatever, the back of the label will have this little symbol that tells you the weight of the yarn, okay? So why does weight matter? Well, if you're making clothing, okay, and you buy a heavyweight yarn, that clothing item is going to be so thick and hot and you're not gonna wanna wear it, okay? Unless you're looking for like a really thick sweater to wear in the middle of winter. Um, if you're trying to make like a cute top, you don't want a heavyweight yarn because it's gonna be very thick, very stiff, not very flowy on your body, and it's gonna be very 
hot, okay? So that's why weight matters. Um, if you're making a blanket, you might want a thick, heavyweight yarn to make it a heavier blanket, make it a thicker, warmer blanket. It's the purpose of a blanket, okay? And you don't want a lightweight yarn when making a blanket or it's going to take you years to finish a blanket because it's going to get you nowhere. You know, you're going to be moving very, very slow, okay? Weight's also important when you are following a pattern, okay? When you're following a pattern, there usually is a section of the pattern where the pattern maker will tell you this is the weight yarn and hook size that I used. If you ignore that, like I used to do when I was beginning and I bought patterns and didn't know what I was doing, I would ignore that and use whatever I had, which is fine in the beginning stages, but it also leads to my very first project, which was a beanie. I was supposed to make it for an adult, but I didn't understand weight. I didn't understand hooks. So I was just like, I'm going to ignore that part used what I had and ended up making a beanie the size for a cat because the weight she was using was way bigger than the weight I was using and the hook she was using was way bigger than the hook I was using so my project ended up being half the size it was supposed to be and that's when I learned weight matters okay another little pro tip for you if you're reading a pattern she uses a brand and she doesn't list the weight of the yarn look the brand up find the weight super easy okay don't give up look at what you find and go from there okay so now you figured out the weight you're gonna want to let's say you're making let's say you're making a top for summer so you decide i'm gonna make a top for summer so you've got the weight it's gonna be lightweight because you don't want to get hot and you want it to kind of be flowy you don't want it to be stiff so you're gonna want a lightweight yarn but now what do i get cotton do i get acrylic do i get wool what's the difference i don't know which one to pick well, lucky for you, I'm here for you making this video. So the answer is whatever you want, okay? That's the easy answer. And when I say this, I mean, if you touch it and you like the way it feels, that's the type of yarn you get. Like, it's very simple. If you're like me and you want to do things budget friendly, um, acrylic is usually the cheapest option. Usually, okay? You usually get the most yarn for the least amount of money with acrylic. And I use Red Heart Super Saver. That's the brand that I use. I don't even know if it's the most budget friendly. It's just what I know I like and what I continue to use throughout the years and never had an issue with. So that's my like favorite weight for acrylic yarn for like anything. Acrylic is obviously budget friendly. Okay, um, I suggest acrylic for beginners because it's cheap. You're not really investing a lot. If you want to be a sustainable person, according to some sources, cotton is the most sustainable. But in my opinion, as long as you're not overbuying your supplies, you're being sustainable, okay? You don't have, because cotton can get so expensive and I hate seeing other creators on this platform tell people that if they're buying acrylic yarn, they're killing the planet, they're ruining the planet, they're being so unsustainable. Um, newsflash people. Some people can't drop $20 for a small ass skein of 100% cotton yarn, okay? I know I can't. So if you want to crochet and you have to be budget friendly, don't let anybody shame you into buying cotton yarn. Like whatever, okay? Buy acrylic yarn. I don't care. Come for me in the comments. I literally don't care. Buy acrylic yarn if that's what you want to do. If you have the money to spend and you like the feel of cotton yarn, buy cotton yarn. I don't care. They both do generally the same thing. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's my opinion on acrylic and cotton, okay? As for wool, I've maybe bought in wool one time. Or no, I've never bought in wool. I hate the feeling of wool. And I live in California. So there's not a lot of times of the year where I can wear wool or really want... Anyways, I can't stand the touch of it. I don't use wool. And it's expensive. So I just stick with acrylic. But if you want to try wool out, I just suggest touching all these, like touching all these yarns because I've ordered yarn online before and then been like, I hate the way this feels. I'm never going to use it. So, okay. Okay. Now you figured out your yarn. You picked the weight, you picked the kind, you picked the color, whatever. All of that fun stuff. Okay. Now it's time for the other tool that you need when crocheting because it takes two things. It takes a hook and yarn. Okay. So, what size hook do I need? Huge question. Easy answer is whatever the symbol on the back of your yarn skein says, okay? Now, when I say yarn skein, it's the the thing of yarn that you got that has a piece of like paper or plastic around it. 
That's a skein of yarn, okay? On the back, next to that fun little symbol that I showed you earlier, the weight symbol, there is a symbol that tells you what size knitting needles and what size crochet hook that you want to use with this bundle or this skein, okay? Is this the golden rule? Is this you have to use this or you can't use this yarn? No, not at all. And the more you crochet, the more you will understand, okay, I kind of want to use this. You, you'll like deviate from whatever the brand hook says, whatever the paper says. Um, I don't even think I look at that anymore, if I'm being honest, just because I've been crocheting for so long and I kind of know what I want to accomplish and what hook I need to do that. But if you're still new and you have no idea, a safe bet is always to just go with whatever's on the label, okay? Or whatever's in your pattern if the weight lines up, okay? So follow your patterns, guys. Don't think you're better than the pattern. If you're a beginner, follow the pattern. To definitely go with whatever's on your skein. That's the easy answer, okay? Now, here's where things here's where things get a little complicated. If you want the item to have more gaps, not be as like tight knit, okay? Oh, I hit the mic. Not be as like tight knit and have a little more looseness, a little more gaps. Like I made a top recently and I went up in hook size two sizes and the top was just more flowy. It wasn't very stiff on me, if that makes sense. I felt it wasn't like a box. It was very more flowy because I had loosened the gauge and the tension in it by sizing up in hooks, okay? So if you want the opposite effect, say you're making a stuffed animal and you're gonna stuff stuffing in it and you don't want any gaps or holes because you don't want people to see the stuffing or the stuffing to fall out, then you can think about going down hook sizes. So smaller hook sizes means closer together, the yarn is closer, there's less gap, things aren't gonna fall out, you won't be able to really see the stuffing. I like to do this when I'm making stuffed animals. I like to go down like a half size or maybe even a full size just to really like make it tight, if that makes sense. But if everything I'm saying about going up sizes and going down sizes is like freaking you out because you're super new and you've never touched a hook before, ignore me, okay? You don't have to learn any of that until later. Get the basics down, follow whatever's on the paper that's on your skein and you'll be fine, okay? Um, but if you've been crushing for a little bit and you kind of want to branch out and not really just follow whatever the paper says, then those tips were for you. And this is something that you're going to be able to feel out with practice, okay? Now, pro tip. If you're brand new at crocheting, if you never touched a hook before or yarn or whatever, I suggest nothing less than a five millimeter hook, okay, for learning. Anything less than, a f this is my opinion, okay, obviously this is my opinion, do not, I can already see the comments. Yeah, well, I learned on a 2.5 and I'm like actually a lot better than you now and I'm like advanced now. So I don't think that it's hard to learn on a 2.5. Okay, I don't care. I really don't care. Uh, it's not about what you think. It's about what I think. That's what this video is about. So um, <laughs> with that being said, five millimeter hook. Okay, that would be your minimum in my opinion. If you want to learn and not give up and not be like, I suck at this and then throw it all away five millimeters your best bet or higher anything higher is fine bigger the better the thinner you get with yarn the harder it's going to be to learn okay because everything's tiny everything's really small your hand hurts from holding a really small hook it's very frustrating and you'll spend hours on something just to get like this much done you want that satisfaction okay so you want to get bigger yarn bigger hooks in the beginning until you figure out how everything works now you know your yarn and you know what size hook you need the next question is what kind of hook do you need when you go down the aisles there's like a wooden bamboo there's like metal ones there's plastic ones with like silicone grippies um there are ergonomic like resin 3d printed ones on etsy that are like super expensive what do you do like which one do you pick okay don't worry i have my opinions we've got metal ones okay um, I started out with these metal ones because I didn't know any better and I didn't have anybody to warn me away from metal ones. Don't go buy these. If you have the money to buy a different one that I'm about to get to, if metal isn't your only option, don't use them. This is your warning from someone who's been crocheting for years. 
save yourself, okay? Save your hands, okay? Save your mind, save your sanity. Don't use the metal ones. They hurt your hands. They just, they, they're they like hard to hold. There's something to hold on to. And you can't crochet for as long and you get more frustrated because your hands are tired, okay? They suck. They just suck, plain and simple. But if it's all you have, it will do the job. It will get the job done. I used them for like a year before I realized there were other options, okay? Obviously, they get the job done. So if that's all you have, use them. Personally, my favorite kind is the plastic ones with the silicone grippies on them. I purchased either gifted to me or purchased a kit. Um, I will have that. I will have the kit link down below because it is literally like I have it right here. I have used this kit since I got it years ago, years ago. And I've had little upgrades, which I will tell you about those later, but little upgrades within this kit that kind of just full circle completed it. Um, and everything that I'm talking about is linked in the description box below. But these little plastic ones with the silicone grippies are the best thing to crochet with and they are budget friendly. Um, they're not going to break your bank and your hands will thank you in the long run. Okay. I still use them to this day with every project. This, they're my favorite. Okay. So 10 out of 10 recommend. Also, I forgot to mention, but this kit that I'm, this kit that I'm showing you also came with these scissors that actually fold down like this, which I love these and these have been so helpful, especially when flying in like airports and on planes and stuff. Um, they're just so like compact and they work perfectly and they're so little. But honestly, I suggest this kit solely for this part of it. So the next one is like wood and bamboo ones. Full transparency, I've never purchased a wood bamboo hook before. I have purchased wood bamboo knitting needles and I mean, it's okay. Some of my knitting needles will splinter and like yarn gets caught really easily on them, which maybe mine are just really low quality. I don't know. But personally, I have never used them, but they have a similar grip to metal ones. Like there's no grip on them. So I'm assuming they're just as bad, but you can try those out on your own if that's something you want to do. Uh, the other one is the ergonomic resin or like 3d printed ones that you can get on etsy i personally do not like the feeling of the ergonomic resin or like 3d printed ones i can't stand the feeling of resin and i cannot stand like whoo no cannot stand the feeling of 3d printed things nope i can't do it sorry if if you can maybe try it out but i think if you've never crocheted before don't spend your money on it because for one you don't even know if you like the hobby yet okay here's your reality check don't spend the money on everything crazy expensive if you don't even know if you like the hobby yet i am a victim to this as well i will buy every single thing for something before i even learn how to do the hobby and then i just have a bunch of stuff and i end up, I end up losing the hobby and not really liking it and then i have a bunch of stuff to get rid of okay i say hold off make it like a goal if you finish your project or if you have been crocheting for like three months tell yourself if i make it this far with this hobby i'll buy these ergonomic things okay you don't need them right out people will tell you like you're gonna ruin your hands uh no you can do the plastic ones with the silicone grip i've been doing them for since 2018 and it's what like 2023 and my hands are still working so um you don't need them don't let anybody pressure you into spending 20 dollars on one hook okay at this point you have everything you need you have everything you need to crochet go have fun but if you're anything like me and you want to know about the bits and bobs and the accessories to crocheting that you don't necessarily need to have to learn or need to spend money on in the beginning, but you want to, keep watching the video because I'm going to go through all of those as well. So this is the budget friendly, just the basics here. The rest, my favorite parts. Here's some of the accessories. I'm going to give you a little list of accessories that I use with my stuff, stitch markers, stitch counters, tension rings, compression gloves, and crochet needles, okay? We're gonna do a brief breakdown of each of these things. So, stitch markers. You can use a bobby pin, a paper clip, whatever. Um, they are used to help keep track of what stitch you're on if you have to count, you know, 
if I have to count more than 10, I'm using a stitch marker because I'm watching TV and I'm going to lose my mark. I'm going to lose where I'm at, okay? It just makes life easier, makes the process easier, makes it a little more fun to not have to worry about counting. Um, so stitch markers are cool. You can get plastic ones for super cheap. I use plastic. I use these plastic ones right now. You can get cuter ones on Etsy if you really want to spend the extra money or you want to have someone give some to you for like Christmas or your birthday or something. There are super cute ones out there. I don't want to spend money on that. So I use these plastic ones, which work perfectly fine. I have broken a couple, but for the most part, they work perfectly fine. Um, the other thing is a stitch counter. Okay. Stitch counters you can use a paper and a pencil to keep track of your stitches. You don't have to spend the money on this, but I love spending money on things like this. So you can get, I have a digital one that kind of wraps around your finger. I love that one. But before I got this one, I used a manual kind of like clicker style uh, stitch counter. Both worked perfectly fine. Um, I used the manual one for a long time. And then when my Etsy orders kind of like skyrocketed and I really didn't have the time to let go of my hook and like pick up something and click it. I really needed something that was like on my finger, just like right there. Um, I switched to the digital one and I'm probably never switching back, but I love my digital switch switch counter. Okay. Um, the next thing is a tension ring. So tension when crocheting is really just keeping a consistent tension throughout your whole project. So things aren't like wonky in certain areas and everything has like a consistent look. This can be a really hard thing for beginners to get because you're really loose in some areas and then you're really tight in some areas and you just haven't quite figured out how everything's supposed to feel when you're crocheting and that is totally fine. Tension is something that comes with practice. So if you're having trouble with it, my advice is crochet more. That's the only thing I can tell you. That's the only way you're going to get it is just crochet more. You will eventually get it. Um, if you want a little extra help, you can buy a tension ring, which basically just feeds the yarn through and kind of keeps a consistent tension. Mind you, I've never used one of these before. I can't crochet with rings on or things like that, and I don't have a problem with my tension, so I've never used a tension ring, but I've heard that it works for some people and it doesn't for others. So if, you, if you're desperately trying to get your tension under control and you need a little assistance, look into a tension ring. It might be helpful for you. Another thing that I definitely recommend if you're going to be crocheting a lot, but it's not necessary in the beginning, is compression gloves, okay? I didn't invest in compression gloves until I had been crocheting for years, and I wish someone had told me years ago to buy compression gloves because your hands are going to hurt so bad, and it really just promotes blood flow in your wrists and your knuckles and your fingers all around. Um, and no one told me, and I wish someone had told me sooner. I don't even know how I found out. It was either like a TikTok or someone was like, was talking about compression socks. And I was like, I wonder if that would help with my wrists, you know? Um, I used to use these copper ones, but I, the yarn kind of got stuck on the grippy part of it. So I use these pink ones that don't have any grip on them. I like these more, so I definitely recommend those. Um, and then there are crochet needles. Now, you use these to kind of weave in the ends of your projects. There are plastic ones and there are metal ones. I use metal ones and recommend metal ones. I have broken many, 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 many plastic ones trying to weave in ends and like pull stuff through really thick crochet projects and they just snap. And it is like the most frustrating thing because weaving in ends is already the worst part of crocheting. It's already the most annoying and boring part of crocheting when your needle breaks it's even more annoying and you just want to give up so i suggest if you're gonna buy these definitely get some metal ones okay i love my metal metal needles i love them okay and that is everything that you need to crochet friendly reminder everything i talked about uh products whatever are all linked in the description box right below this video if you want to order any of that stuff it's right there for you super simple follow me on instagram if you're not following me on instagram why i repost your guys's projects on my stories um if you tag me in them i'll put it on my story so um if you are over on instagram definitely follow me there okay we're growing a little community over there also if this video was helpful to you in any way please subscribe to my channel we are a little crochet corner on the internet and we all help each other just learn new ideas, you know, beginner stuff, advanced stuff, whatever. And if you have any questions that I wasn't able to answer in this video, or if you need more of like clarification on stuff, please leave a comment down below and I will respond like super quick. I'm literally always on my phone. My screen time is insane. Other than that though, thank you for watching. Bye.